Hello everyone. Today I will recap you a movie titled Lars and the Real Girl. So make some tea and we'll start. The main character of the film is a lonely man named Lars, who lives in a small town. He looks out the window and sees a girl leaving the next house. She knocks on his door and invites him to breakfast. From their conversation it becomes clear that they are familiar and that Lars has problems with communication, it is difficult for him. Lars refuses breakfast, citing what he needs to go to church, but still agrees to come in when he gets back. This girl's name is Karen and she turns out to be the wife of Lars' brother Gus and she is pregnant. Next, we see her conversation with her husband where she says she's worried about Lars, but he answers that he just needs peace. In the next scene, we see that Lars is really present at the sermon. Lars helps an elderly woman Mrs. Garner take the flowers to the car. She advises him to find a girlfriend and gives him a flower to give it to a pretty girl. The woman gets into the car and at that moment Larsa is called by a redhead girl, he turns around and throws the flower aside. He returns home and doesn't visit Karen and Gus. Lars comes to work and there they try to bring him together with someone in every possible way. He takes a workplace and his office mate tells him about a doll that can be ordered and choose parts for yourself. A redhead girl at work named Margot tries her best to talk to Lars, but Larsa only annoyed, and he ignores her. When Lars returns home on the road, Karen jumps up and invites Lars to dinner. Lars tries his best to refuse and starts walking towards the house, but the girl attacks him from behind and knocks him to the ground. Lars agrees to dinner. The atmosphere at dinner leaves much to be desired, you can see that everyone is uncomfortable. Lars is tense and didn't eat anything. When Karen leaves, Lars' brother says she's worried about him, to which Lars replies that he's okay. Gus also says that Lars is the same as their father, to which Lars replies that this is not the case at all. He offers Lars to move in with them, because half of the house belongs to him, and he lives in a garage, but Lars refuses. Next, we move forward a month and a half. Karen calls Lars and informs him that a huge box has been brought to him. Lars returns home and seems to be going to a meeting. He goes to his brother and says he has guests. He says that he has a girlfriend visiting, she's in a wheelchair and doesn't speak English well. She is also very devout, and therefore they can't stay overnight together, so Lars asks his brother to shelter her in a free room. Karen and brother agree and they are very glad that Lars finally met someone. Lars brings a sex doll to visit them, and they're scared. Lars calls her Bianca and says that she is a missionary, and that now she is on vacation and she decided to see the world. Gus and Karen go to the kitchen where they discuss that Lars has gone crazy. Karen asks her husband not to lose his temper and pretend that everything is fine. Lars says that Bianca's luggage and wheelchair were stolen. Lars also asks Karen to borrow clothes for Bianca. Gus and Karen saying that Bianca may be sick, force Lars to go to the doctor with her, hoping that such a doctor will be able to examine Lars. They go to the hospital in the morning. The doctor examines Bianca and says that she has low blood pressure and needs to be monitored. The doctor asks Lars to bring Bianca for special procedures once a week. Karen and Gus are talking to the doctor. The doctor says that Lars is not a schizophrenic, but just raving, most likely it's a reaction to some stress. The doctor asks Lars' loved ones to play around with him. Gus really cares that Lars will become a laugher, but they try to play along with him. At home, during tomorrow, Gus can't stand it and says that Bianca is a piece of plastic, but Lars doesn't seem to notice it. Lars is leaving for work. Karen feels guilty for what happens to Lars, and Gus denies his guilt. We see rumors spreading in the city. Lars begins to take Bianca with him and becomes more socially active. First, he brings her to church and the city dwellers also start playing along with Larsa. At one of the services, the woman even gave her flowers. Lars decides to take Bianca to the lake, where he played with Gus as a child. He tells Bianca about his childhood and sings for her. At the next appointment at the hospital, the doctor tells Lars that Bianca needs a rest after the procedure, and asks him to go to her office. There she asks Lars about Bianca, but when Lars talks about Bianca, he seems to be talking about himself. He says that her parents died when she was very young, says she doesn't want to be felt sorry for, she wants to be like everyone else. We see Lars and Bianca spending time together. Lars chop wood and communicates with Bianca, because on the last walk he promised to show her how he chop wood, as he is very good at it. After that, we see Karen and Gus washing Bianca in the bathroom. 
Gus doesn't understand why they're trying so hard, Karen is trying to support him, but it's clear that it's hard for her too. At the next appointment, Lars tells the doctor about Karen, he says he's worried about her, because she looks like something haunts her. Lars thinks she's trying to please everyone, but not everyone likes it. Lars is worried that Karen takes everything to heart and does not understand that not everyone needs communication, hinting at themselves. Lars says that it is very difficult for him to accept support and affection, he says that hugs hurt him like a burn. And that's what happens to everyone except Bianca. The doctor decides to help Lars and tries to touch him. After touching his hand, Lars says it's tolerable, but when the doctor touches his neck, he distorts him, he gets up from the couch and gets dressed. He says that everything is fine and the doctor says that it will be enough for today. Lars comes to his colleague's party with Bianca. Close people play along with Lars, but there are also those who call him crazy behind his eyes. At the party, the girls discuss Bianca's hairstyle and Lars says that he wouldn't mind if she got a haircut if she wants it herself. He notices Margot who is in close contact with his other colleague. After the party, Lars asks Bianca if she liked it, and says he liked it too. We see Lars and Bianca spending time together, reading, visiting the grave of Lars' parents. As a result of classes with Dr. Lars learn to tolerate long touches. The doctor asks if he is waiting for the baby to appear. The conversation leads to Lars saying that Bianca's mother died in childbirth, and the doctor notices that Lars' mother also died in childbirth. It becomes clear that Lars is worried about Karen, he believes that childbirth is very dangerous and he begins something like a panic attack. The doctor calms him down. People help Lars and invite Bianca to work, cut her hair, occupy her in every possible way and create the illusion of her life. Karen and Gus are talking. Gus says that Lars won't recover, and it seems to him that it's his fault. He says he left home as soon as he could, forgetting about Lars. Karen comforts Gus hugging him. At work, Lars sees Margot communicating very lively with a colleague, with whom he saw her at the party. When Lars returns home, he finds out that Bianca has plans and he is very upset. He asks Karen and Mrs. Garner to leave them alone and the women hear screams coming from the room. Lars says he doesn't have to check the schedule to meet her. He puts Bianca in the car and Mrs. Garner tells Lars that Bianca has her own life. Lars is very upset and talking to Karen. Lars says that Bianca left him and that people do what they think about, that they don't care about others. In response, Karen breaks down and gives out a monologue that all people in the city help Bianca because they love Lars. Gus enters the room to put Bianca as usual, but Lars says that now he will do it himself, he also says thank you to his brother. At work, Margot approaches Lars with her boyfriend and they meet greetings by the hand. At doctor appointment, Lars says he proposed to Bianca, but she refused. We see another quarrel between Lars and Bianca. He asks her to stop yelling and apparently their relationship is deteriorating. Lars talks to Gus and asks how he realized that he had become a man. Gus doesn't want to answer, he's afraid to say something wrong. As a result, he says that they do not become a man at one moment, a boy still lives inside everyone, but you grow up when you start doing the right thing not for yourself, but for others. Gus cites the example of their father who pulled two children despite the fact that it was very difficult for him, did not hand them over to an orphanage as some do. Gus apologizes for leaving Lars with his father alone, for not thinking about Lars. At work, Margot brings his teddy bear to his colleague Lars and says that it's too much to hang him, and asks him to remove the loop. He hung the girl's bear in retaliation for stealing his soldiers. He refuses to remove the loop and tells Margot to accept that her bear is dead. She leaves in tears. Lars finds her in the restroom. She says that she broke up with her boyfriend and she cries not only because of the bear. She says she dated him because she was lonely. Lars takes the loop off the bear and gives him artificial respiration. This encouraged the girl and she asks if he is busy on Friday night, to which Lars replies that Bianca has a school board session, he will take her and be free. In the next scene we see their meeting, they are in bowling. Gus colleagues come there and see Lars and join the game. They all flirt with Margot and Lars looks lost. At the end of the meeting, the girl thanks Lars for getting out with her, but Lars says that she should not misunderstand him, and that he will never change Bianca. They go outside and say goodbye. At doctor appointment, Lars says he doesn't understand if Bianca's treatment helps and the doctor says he doesn't know. Lars says it's hard for him, because he knows that Bianca loves him, but doesn't accept the offer to marry him. Everyone in the house wakes up because of Lars' screams. Lars tries to wake up Bianca, but she doesn't wake up. Lars calls an ambulance and Bianca is taken away. 
The doctor says that Bianca is dying and Lars asks to see her. We see footage of upset residents of the city who hear rumors about the state of Bianca. The doctor says that Lars decides what's going on with Bianca, albeit unconsciously. Bianca decides to spend the night at home and Lars stays there with her. She doesn't wake up in the morning. Many people gathered at home to support Lars. They say they came just to stay, to support him, and that people do so when trouble comes. Gus and Karen call Lars and Bianca to nature, because they did not leave the house after Bianca fell ill. Gus and Karen go for a walk and leave Lars and Bianca alone on the shore of the lake. Lars cries and kisses Bianca. From the other side of the lake, Karen and Gus notice Lars standing to his waist in the water and crying. In the next scene, we see a touching ceremony of Bianca's funeral. After the funeral, Gus communicates with the doctor. He says that Lars has become different and thanks the doctor. Lars stands above Bianca's grave and Margot approaches him. Lars says Bianca asked him not to be sad. He also says that he knows that over time the pain will subside, to which Margot replies that this is true, but there will be no one like Bianca. Margot says they need to catch up with the others, but Lars offers her a walk. The End